Everything is in three steps, three stages these days. You know, it's, a, it's three steps to heaven, actually. And uh, that's the same thing with fiscal policy, three steps to fiscal policy, to fiscal truth, if you will, uh, here on Talking Tax with Tom. And guess what? There's Tom Yamachika on Talking Tax with Tom, talking about Arthur Schopenhauer. My goodness, you know, when, you, when this show is over, talk to your better half and ask your better half if your better half knows anything about Arthur Schopenhauer. So, Tom, how come you settled on Arthur Schopenhauer? Well, um, Arthur Schopenhauer is a German philosopher. That this is this is him right here, and uh, he has, uh, you know, given us one of the uh, the great quotes about uh, the nature of truth and how it's accepted into our society. And we'll, we'll get to it in a, in, a, in just just a second. But uh, I, I had a you know a little poster. Uh, with uh, um, Mr. Schopenhauer's quote, uh, and it was, you know, I, I bought it in Berkeley, which is where I went to law school, and I had it in my dorm room when I was there. Uh, it helped remind me of the, uh, you know, the fragility of truth and, and how it, you know, comes to be ex uh, accepted. So, so let me just kind of go over, you know, what his quote was. And then we'll, we'll go into how that plays out in our state government today. Mm. So, uh, Mr. Schopenhauer had a quote about truth going through three steps. So, he said that all truth goes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. And if that isn't bad enough, the second stage is that it is violently opposed. And then after that, it is accepted as self-evident. Hmm. Wait a minute, are, are we talking about state issues here or federal issues? I wanna be clear about that. Because Well, I mean, like he was talking can... about all truth. <laughs> okay. He was talking about all truth. <laughs> but let me, let me kind of give you an application to here in Hawaii, nei, this you know this sucker just happened. Okay, you may remember the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Uh, we we um, have uh, one of its trustees as a uh, host on another think tech show. Uh, his name is Kali Yakina. He uh, got into. Uh, and it was elected a, a trustee of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs a few years ago. And uh, he made it his mission to, you know, find uh, and uncover, you know, fiscal improprieties which he thought were taking place uh, or had taken place at the office. So, he came out with a proposal that the uh, the trustees engage a national accounting firm to look for fraud, waste, and abuse. No, there isn't any. Come on, Kelly. E. You know. And then he he had. That's he, the ridicule phase. That's the ridicule phase. So. First, he had to convince his fellow trustees that there was actually something there uh, to even look at, because it, it involved the expenditure of a, you know, fairly large amount of money to get this audit study going. But eventually, uh, there was about a half million dollars paid uh, in, uh, I think it was around September 2018 to the accounting firm Clifton Larson Allen, a national accounting firm to conduct a review of OHA's contracts and disbursements. The review found 38 red flag transactions, transactions that looked suspicious, and uh, the, the uh, uh, Clifton Larson Allen issued a report on it, 
the report was kind of hard to read. So uh, Mr. Rakina's office, he had some aides kind of, you know, grind through it and, and come up with a more readable version of these 38 red flag transactions. Okay. Now, what was OHA's reaction? On the day the report was issued, a statement of OHA's chair of the board at that time, Colette Machado, and its chair of the Committee on Resource Management, Dana Huna, said, while this report observed indicators of potential fraud, waste, and abuse, it did not identify actual instances of fraud, waste, or abuse. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what? Um, but not only did the the, the uh, incumbent trustees uh, were, were the the older trustees, um, they didn't stop there. Uh, they used that as an argument to try to kick Mr. Akina out. Uh, on a PBS Insights candidates forum, they had uh, a Keone Souza, who was then running against Mr. Akina. Uh, and uh, by the way, he got elected this time around, and, and he's he's a, a new trustee now. But but Mr. Souza said, "Hey, do I think there was a waste of five hundred thousand dollars? Absolutely." Phase three. Now, this is phase two. This is still phase two, the violent opposition, because uh, the uh, OHA chair, uh, Trustee Machado, she doubled down and said, Kili, you tried to find the smoking gun, and there was none. It's on you now. Despite this opposition, Mr. Aquino won his 2020 race and he's still an OHA trustee. Um, Colette Machado is no longer OHA chair. Uh, the uh, president of, uh, of, of OHA I means its executive director, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Crab, he's no longer there. He was the he was the one who wrote to John Kerry, wasn't he? That's right. Yeah, that was an amazing letter. Seeing, seeing Hawaii as a separate country. Yeah, it kind of you know there there are some things that kind of make you shudder at the thought. So after that happened, um, the the legislature was motivated to uh, to follow up. Uh, on this on this red flag study, and they they took uh, the uh, uh, the OHA trustees at their word. All right, so you got these red flags. Let's find out if there was actual evidence of fraud, waste, or abuse. They went to a second a second accounting firm called Plant Moran, also a national firm, and uh, they took a look at. Uh, these red flag transactions, and they found, yeah, there was in fact instances of fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, you know, not all 32 transactions uh, were so characterized, but a good number of them were. And then we go to the third stage of truth, acceptance as self evident, acceptance as self evident. OHA Chair Carmen Hulu Lindsay was quoted as saying at a news conference, we are determined to assure accountability for past wrongdoing. We know we have to do much better to deliver what our beneficiaries need. So it was right all along. We're supporting it. We got to clean this up. So that's those are the three stages of truth when it came to OHA. Ridicule, violent opposition, and then acceptance is self-evident. Hmm. Thank you very no, much, Trust. Thank no, you very no, much, no, Trustee Aquina. Yeah, he stuck with it the whole time, didn't he? Good for he, him. So we want to thank him for that. And that shows us, uh, at least in that instance, what happened and, and the 
uh, the, the, the stages of truth that that went through. Now, we, we are seeing these three stages play out in another context, and we've, uh, you know, had some uh, the people involved in our show. Before, before before you go to that, I just want to remark that um, there are relationships between the three phases. The one that comes to mind first is when you say it's self-evident, um, you're really putting the lie to uh, phase one and two. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we were only kidding you before. We were kidding you when we ridiculed you. Sorry about that. And we were kidding you when we uh, doubled down and opposed this violently. Uh, and number three is like, oh, you forget stages one and two. They didn't really happen. And, uh, you know, the implication is that we do this all the time. That's no big deal. We'll work it out. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a tremendous dishonesty in this sequence, right? Well, not necessarily. I mean, this was being made by different people now. So, uh, from the point of view of the organization and its communications to the public. Oh, yeah. I mean, the organization stayed the same, uh, but the actors in it didn't. And, and that, I think, is one good part of the process. I mean, when you have to go through, you know, these three stages of truth, uh, I, I think there's a price to be paid. And so we, we, we don't want to go through this all the time um, if, if we don't have to. go through it enough of the time so that um, people get to feel some confidence ultimately. Uh, and, and, and we need to go through it as, as, as much of the time as we find there are problems. So if Kali'i Akina found that there were other issues beyond the 38 red flags, uh, then he could and should and would uh, raise those flags as well. I would expect him to do that. Oh, yeah, of course. But I think anyway. at that point, we're already in the third stage. So um, uh, it's, it's a little bit more smooth sailing that time. So, so how is it applied today? Uh, as I was about to talk about, uh, we talked in earlier shows about the Department of Land and Natural Resources. You remember we had a, uh, a former gentleman, uh, a gentleman who was formerly uh, in the land division of DLNR. And he talked about uh, mismanagement of public lands. He was ridiculed. He's not there anymore. The state auditor came in. What? What? what uh, how come he's not there anymore? He retired. But it, 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 people criticized him for it. Well, of course he did. Of course they did. And um, then the state auditor came in, and he, you know, looked around and found some some of the same issues that the uh, that the gentleman on the inside was talking about. And we had him on the show. And uh, so what happened with that? The House of Representatives formed an investigative committee to uh, follow up on the findings of uh, the audit that, that were issued for DLNR and, and I believe the uh, uh, Agribusiness Development Corporation, ADC. But it was kind of more concerning about the uh, about the auditor, because in the end, uh, a good third to one half of the report wasn't about either ADC or the Department of Land and Natural Resources. It was, let's throw out the auditor. That was the violent opposition. That didn't so, work, though. It didn't work. Uh, yeah, the, audit, the audit is still there. Said, yeah. uh, we're not entirely sure if this violent opposition phase is completely done yet. Uh, we still so have the, the same Speaker of the House. Is the investigation done? I think the investigation is done. Uh, what was many the of the same people the are, are still... What was the investigation? Hmm? What was the report of the investigation? Kick out, of the, kick out the auditor. That's what that's the, that's the report. Pretty much. They yeah. said, oh, well, you know, DLNR uh, had a response for, uh, you know, what, what the accusations were. Mm, sounds reasonable. Uh, ADC had a response for what their accusations were. Uh, sounds reasonable. It must must have been the auditor kind of going overboard and 
and you know breaking all legitimate boundaries and let's get the hell you know let's get get let's get him the hell out of there well well do we get to a third phase on that hopefully the third phase will start soon since you know since we've gone through the first two already so hopefully there are some you know uh new and enlightened faces at the legislature in this coming session we'll be able to see this problem as it is and help clean up uh dlnr well you you know you spoke about in the oha case you spoke about the evolution of the organization itself and although faces one and two might have been just you know involved dishonest people uh or politically charged people um we have to follow the institution <clears throat> and so in the third phase in oha um you have new faces you you mentioned i think that's an important factor here and that that's why it's important to have new faces uh, that's why important it's important to keep changing the officials involved so that the next generation can point out where we are on the on the three-step continuum um, right so, so so we're at the phase right now where we've got a new governor. Uh, there will probably be a new director of uh, DLNR. Uh, there may be other changes within the organization as well. We don't know yet. Uh, there are changes within the legislature. We don't know if those are going to affect the outcome of the legislative investigation or if there's going to be another investigation or, you know, what other repercussions are going to be. But there are certainly new faces in the legislature, both in the House and the Senate. Um, well, the, the stage is set for step three. But let me ask you this, Tom: what What does step three look like? Um, you know, in in your mind's eye, um, how do we know we're there? Who is saying what? What happens? Uh, where you and I can conclude that? Oh, good, we're in step three. I think we're. Uh, we're, we will be in stage three when somebody either within DLR or at the legislature says, oh, yes, there were problems there. Let's clean them up or we've cleaned them up. And uh, you know, the state auditor wasn't a bad guy after all. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the outcome that I'm looking for. Okay. That's the outcome that I think should happen. You know, the funny thing is you mentioned a minute ago that um... – that it was a disconnect between what was going on in the uh, agribusiness uh, organization and uh, what was, you know, and the, um, the the criticism of the state auditor, um, and, and I, I kind of I remember that we had a couple of shows on that, and um, there was a disconnect. So if there is a disconnect, then logically, Tom, um, they can find the truth and say it's self-evident about the agribusiness corporation that they could stick um, on their conclusion that the state auditor was somehow out of bounds right no it's possible but i don't think that's what's going to happen okay i, I mean, mean they, it would be a bad result if that happened i i uh, think so too yeah yeah okay, but, I, so but i think the you know the, the truth that we're talking about here extends both uh to dlnr and the, the the state auditor i mean we we need we need the state auditor around we need a watchdog in there uh we need we need him to you know bark and bark and bark um even though there may be some false alarms here and there i mean that that's it's, it's a natural part of the process yeah um, but we, need, we we absolutely need to have him or we maybe never get to phase three that's right we, we would never get to even phase two sometimes yeah. So um, any any other examples, or if not, you know, what are the grand conclusions from these two examples that you've given? Well, I remain cautiously optimistic about the future of our state. I mean, it, it may take, you know, some uh, big bumps, violent hurdles, uh, hopefully not an armed insurrection, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, there are going to be uh certainly bumps on the way to get to uh you know fiscal health fiscal responsibility uh, uh transparency uh, all of the things that uh we think are essential for good government 
Well, let me let me uh, 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 synthesize some of the things that that we've discussed and maybe would be relevant. Number number one, um, the press is an important factor here. The Civil Beat, uh, the Star Advertiser, and to some extent Think Tech. Um, we we've, we've got to reveal where the ridicule is inappropriate where the opposition is inappropriate, and what the um, final realization is self-evident uh, really means in terms of the first two steps. And we've got to call a spade a spade when we uh, examine um, a, a truth that should have been recognized at the outset. And I say we, I mean all the media. It's not just that we slide you know, delicately into phase three when you get to phase three, you've got to call out phase one and two. You've got to say the ridicule was inappropriate uh, and disingenuous, if you will. And the double down you know, opposition, that was also inappropriate and disingenuous. Um, so uh, the media has got a, a role here, I think, in calling this out in order to minimize it uh, going forward. And the second point that comes to me is that it's really important that we get new blood in the legislature as often as possible. And that well, not means, only in the legislature, in, in all of our you know, state government uh, organs, uh, I, I think that's essential. Well, that's why uh, Josh Green ought to appoint new people wherever he can. You know, let's, let's, uh, let's clear the air, including DLNR. Uh, enough. Hmm. So, yes, I totally agree. It's everywhere in state government. And and the governor has a you know a fair opportunity to do that, but so do the voters. And uh, you know we 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 want to see fresh blood, new faces. We want to see, may I say, young people who are idealistic come in there and who are not afraid. Oh yeah, um, the uh, you know one of the ingrained features of the state government we now have is uh, and and and. It's not only here, but it's in a lot of other states. It's the civil service system. So, so we change people at the top, uh, but the people just below them uh, have been there forever and ever, or could be. So uh, there is, I think, uh, you know, ingrained in the system a resistance to change. Um, and hopefully that won't uh, impede the, you know, the truth you know the the truth stage process too much but that is you know certainly uh where some of the resistance or the ridicule uh, or the violent opposition can come from and the third thing that comes to my mind is um internal uh, reform restructuring you know for example the power that the chair in a given committee has in the legislature that's off. That's 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 got to be changed. Um, the the power of the uh, conference committees at the end that's got to be changed. And the whole thing about bait and switch, you know, uh, in the in the bills, those those kinds of reforms have to be confirmed and expanded, so that it's um, you know transparent and there's no room for backroom deals and so forth. Because what you're talking about reflects a certain level of corruption. And and we have to we have to address that. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, ideally, uh, you know, people could understand that from the beginning. But if they don't, and and a lot a lot of times they don't, uh, then it has to go through some painful, you know, realization stages and and uh, reactionary stages before we get to you know, where we need to be. I remember I. Uh... I went door to door for a candidate 20 years ago, and an inordinate number of people would slam the door in my face. Um, maybe it was because, um, you know, of, of racial issues. I don't know. But what they would say to me was, I don't vote. I don't care. I'm not involved, and I don't want to be involved. Don't talk to me about state government. Don't talk to me about candidates and elections. I said to myself, see, that's not, not productive in a, de a de democratic uh, society. And I think there's a lot of people, you, you know, it's reflected in the turnout, right? A lot of people in this state just don't care. They don't want to be involved. Not their business. 
And so they let it go on year after year, term after term, um, without even knowing what's going on, much less acting on it. Well, then if, if you're in that camp, uh, don't complain about high taxes. Don't complain about government corruption. And don't complain about stuff that you can fix at the ballot box. How do we get them engaged? Well, I think by programs like this. I mean, we, 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 we take the truth out. We show people how the truth has gone through st three stages. And, uh, you know, let them decide, hey, is this the kind of government we want? Is this the kind of government we need? And if not, let's make some changes. You know, I admire your your zeal and your pers perspicacity. Can I say that, um, Tom, and the Tax Foundation? Um, but query whether there are enough tax foundations in this state. Uh, whether there should be more tax foundations, um, you know, singing the same song, um, you know, raising the same issues. Um, I, I think, you know, frankly, uh, it's it's a great way to have a, a valuable career. I think everybody has a duty to, to learn and speak out, everyone. Uh, and I don't think people in the state fully understand that, or a lot of them. And I'm not sure that the young people coming into, you know, the workforce and the the, the the force by which they, they might seek election. I don't know if they understand that. So query, um, are there enough tax foundations? Could there be more? What should they look like? Well, um, in terms of like nonprofits like ours, yeah, we have a few of them uh, with, with different um, uh, political ide ideological leanings. I mean, there's the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, which Kali'i Akina does head. Uh, there's the um, uh, Appleseed Center for Law and Economic Justice, which looks at some, you know, some of the same issues. Um, there's uh, the Civil Beat Law Center for uh, that Brian Blackheads. Uh, he has, uh, or his organization has been responsible some of, for some of the major transparency victories uh, at the Supreme Court of Hawaii. Uh, so, you know, p organizations like ours are out there. Um, we're, we're a dying breed. Why do because, you say that? Well, we need to know more. Uh, funding levels have dropped. Um, my organization, for example, is down to you know one and a half people. Used to be like four or five. Thinking of Lowell Kalapa way back when. Yeah. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. And even even before him, the, you know, the, the Fred Benyons, um, the other uh, executive directors that uh, we at the foundation have had over the years, uh, with the roots in the Chamber of Commerce. Well, I suggest to you um, that um, the same malaise that I described a minute ago is the. Is, is, is operating um, on your funders. Um, they know what you stand for. They know what you're doing, presumably, um, but they're not excited about it. They don't want to be involved. It's not important to them. Uh, they'll go with the flow, don't, no make A. And this is a serious problem because if they don't care even enough to support somebody who does do something about it, like the Tax Foundation, uh, then you know we're really cooked, aren't we? At the end of the day, if we didn't have a tax foundation, if, if we didn't have a number of these other uh, nonprofits, uh, we would be mm, uh, victimized. I mean, as a society, the yeah, no, I mean, would be pulled it, it, out from under us. Absolutely. Uh, so we we need watchdog organizations. Ours is one of them. So um, I, I I hope. That uh, you know the people who do support us recognize the um, the uh, three stages that we're going through as well. Uh, when we did our real lawsuit, for example, uh, that manifested the you know the ridicule and the violent opposition to the uh, you know, the ten percent skim off the off the county surcharge, mm -hmm. and now it's down to one percent. It's accepted as self-evident. 
<laughs> can't even remember faces one and two. They're gone. Nobody wants to remember them, you know. That's right. Oh, we do. They, they charge 10%. When? You know, Tom, a lot of this is um, just to go to Schopenhauer for a minute. It, it's really a study in truth is what it is. If you if you come up there and you tell a a, a, a song and dance story um, that something is, is not wrong, that it's just all fine, um, and you know better, this is on the national level too. Of course, we see it every day in the newspaper. Um, you're not telling the truth. And, you know, and when Trump started lying, and, you know, the estimates are that he lied 30,000 times, 30,000. Did I say 30,000? Yeah, I said 30,000 times, uh, as documented by the press, uh, over the course of his administration. Um, that's pretty serious for a democracy, because you've got to have truth. You've got to have people telling the truth. So when you see people going through these three phases, whether it, whether it be city, state, um, you know, or, um, or national, um, and denying the reality, not that far off from denying the election. Uh, and this is very troublesome that we have um, such a ubiquitous question of truth. Well, hopefully... Uh, people will recognize that the, uh, you know, uh, Trump lying about the elections was the ridicule. January 6th was a violent opposition. And now people are, I think, are accepting as self-evident that, you know, wrong stuff happened. And, and, and we're not going to elect that guy in, 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 uh, into the White House ever again. You heard it here on Think Tech. Uh, that's Tom Yamachika speaking the truth. <laughs> just like Schopenhauer. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom, for a very interesting discussion. Thank you, Jay, for having me on the show. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.